Uh, hey guys, sorry. Um, <coughs> so I'm going to do a tutorial on the three archways that are my last post. Um, just going to wait for a couple of people to join. So uh, whilst I'm waiting for everyone to join, I'm hoping everyone um, can see this. Um, what I'm just going to do is just set up really quickly. So I've got my A3 piece of paper and I'll, and I'll move it along. I'm trying to do it in portrait orientation so you guys don't miss anything. All I've done is I've scored a line through the centre. Um, and I'm going to be using one compass. So the one I'm using is this one. Um, I know in yesterday's um, live feed, what I did is I talked about not having any plastic element here. Um, I am actually going to use a Jacquard compass. Uh, the reason being is it's got a, an attachment which allows me to put a pen in. Um, and it's actually, of all of the sort of so-called cheap options, um, I've, I actually really like the Jacquard. It's actually still quite accurate. Um, the one thing, oh, sorry. The one thing, welcome salam. One thing I would say about it is that these guys have got these quick release um, edges. Um, there are various different arguments for using them. Personally, I wouldn't use them. If you use the quick release mechanisms, I've noticed in some compasses it throws the tuner out. So if you if you're getting one that's got it, by all means get it. But just I know it, it's effort, and everybody wants to do everything immediately, but. Just, you know, take your time and use your wind-up uh, tuner rather than the quick release, just for longevity. Um, but in terms of um, a starting compass, this is a really good one. So it's made by Jakar, J-A-K-A-R. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to do the three archways. And um, all I'm going to do, I don't know if you're sort of doing this with me, I'm just going to divide this up so I've got a good amount of space between all of them and there and then um, it doesn't really matter um, what uh, width you use to be honest just base it on your paper but I've got a 40 centimeter long piece of paper um, and just in order to fit all three in I'm probably gonna this is my only measurement I'm making I'm probably gonna stick to about four centimeters roughly in uh, diameter so um, let's get started. I'm using a pen just so that you guys can actually see what I'm doing. So I'm going to place my compass at my center point, uh, which is really difficult. I might um, not be terribly clear at some points just because I'm trying to figure out how to do this with a camera right up against my face as well. Okay, so bismillah. You start with your initial circle. Oh, I think this is going to be quite big actually. Okay, that's come through nicely on the, on the screen. Okay, so... Um, I probably will reduce the compass size for the next one. Um, the reason I said have two compasses rather than one is um, what you end up having to do, the next step is I'm going to have to enlarge my compass diameter. If I've got two compasses and I, ha and I keep this one at this um, uh, compass setting, it's better because I need to come back to it. Um, changing your compass settings again and again means that what you're going to do is you're going to introduce an error and the error might be absolutely tiny but when you're looking to work with accuracy it's just easier to work with two compasses okay so your first step is to draw your circle and then what we're going to do is we're going to widen our compass so again I told you I'm going to work with one compass so those of you who've only got one know what to do and we're going to draw something called the vesica piscis uh, which means fish bladder. Okay, so I want to now increase my compass so it's the width, the original diameter of my original circle. And I'm going to draw a semicircle, just slightly more than a semicircle with my pen at that point <clears throat> on the west, uh, never eat, S, <laughs> eastern point and then going from the west. Okay, so... If you notice, like I told you yesterday, when I place my compass, what I do is I hold it with the point leg first. That's when I place it, and then I go to the top of the compass, which is where I hold it in order to spin it. Okay, so you've got your vesica piscis, and what this allows us to do is to draw our vertical axis. So, next step. I don't want to take my pen out, so I'm actually going to draw this out with pencil just because I don't like changing pens out of a compass but this is only for your viewing anyway okay so um, once you get that I've now got my northern point on my original circle I need to return my compass to the original 
um, radius. So reducing it again, and you have to be as accurate as possible. So it's worth, when you put it back, just checking it against, so it meets the here and it meets there. So, oops, sorry about the shaking. I keep nudging this. Okay, so what I'm now going to do is place my compass at the northernmost point, and then I'm going to draw a semicircle through my original circle, okay? <clears throat> These two points are really important. I'm going to draw a line between them. I'm just going to extend them beyond the circle, but this is known as the springing line, okay? So the arch effectively is going to be drawn from this line. Um, the rest of it will be the body of the door, but the arch in itself is this. And so because the, the compass is going to be placed on this line, somewhere along this line, we call that the springing line. Now, the arches themselves, when you look at different arches, um, the... Um, Springing line and how it's divided is what gives rise to all the different arches that um, that come uh, uh, that that are found. So, um, more being, don't worry, I, I figured out how to save it. So, uh, hopefully, you can watch back the beginning. Okay, so this is our springing line. Um, if we don't divide it and we just go straight to the center, we end up with uh, our first and most simple uh, one point uh, arch. So we're gonna do that one to start off with. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep to this radius that we began with and we're gonna take the central point, okay? And I'm just gonna show you two elements. So the first is I start on the springing line, oops, and then I do a semicircle all the way around. And I stop, okay? So this line here is just, is, is the arch. And I could basically come down, across, and up. Um, and that's your typical, standard, semicircular arch. But I think this is more common in Islamic lands, is instead of actually um, staying at the springing line, I actually go back to my original horizon, so that it curves back, oh sugar, sorry I lost my, it curves back in, okay, I'm going to come back and cover that in a second, the next thing that I want to do, so just remember this is my arch now, the next thing I want to do is I want to create the divisions that are going to go down, so we do this in a really nifty way, we're going to keep the width as it was originally here, take it to the top of the vesica and create a little dash here, and a little dash on this side. We're going to do the same at the bottom of the vesica. I'm hoping everyone can see this. So that's where I've placed it. Again, I, I probably wouldn't make my arcs as big as this. It's just I want you to be uh, aware of what I'm doing. So normally when you're drafting properly, you, would, you, you wouldn't need to do them that big. Okay, so... The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try and find the length of my vesica. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, because I've got the length here, if you, if I change my point from here to the outside of the circle and cross it, go to this side, the outside of the circle and cross it, can you see what I've done is I've just transferred this length to either side. So I should have a, um, a really nice rectangle coming up there. Um, and then that's basically all I need to complete my piece. So we have, one, two, My God, I hope you guys can't hear my tummy rumbling. Um, right, okay. Now, this is what's interesting, is this bit goes in ever so slightly. Okay. And I'm just gonna swap the pen and my compass just so I can highlight what I've done. Reduce my compass size, wrong way. Uh, I'm going to check the questions in a second. Just want to get this finished first. 
go back to this and complete. And that's the shape. Okay, so that's the first one. Let me just go back to the questions before I move on to the next question, next um, shape. Okay. Ba -ba -ba -bum. Somebody asked a question, I'm sure. The diameter of the circle is the radius of the bigger one, Ali Ocean. Um, the diameter of the circle. Yeah, so the original circle, radius, I think you mean the vesica. The, the radius of the vesica is the diameter of the original circle. So the original circle was here, and I drew that. Then to get the vesica, I increased the compass leg. So before they were here, then they were there. Okay, so then I did that shape there, and then moved from this side, and then did that. Hopefully that makes sense, okay? Um, so that's your first one. Um, everyone happy with that? And we'll do the second one. Um, the second and the third are known as... Um, I think they're called two-point arches or two-centered arches. Um, this one had only the one center, the arch itself. I just needed to place my compass in this location and then I created it. So these ones are uh, made by using the, placing the compass on two points within the springing line. So uh, let's just start again. I'm actually going to change the color. Um, I'm going to try and see if I can just do it with a pencil, just because I think it's a little bit cleaner when you put the black in to see. Um, and I want to make it maybe three centimeters wide, just so that it's a little bit easier to see. So, okay, let's try this. So, I'm wondering if that's going to be too small for you guys. Uh... Okay, let's just increase it a little bit. So again, actually the starting point is pretty much the same. Can everyone see that circle? Is that clean enough? Well, hang on, let me turn the light off at the back. Oh God, that's pointless. Uh, put the light back on. Hopefully. Uh, oh, hang on, uh, Mabeen, can I get ready to do the next one or have I missed some points? Oh, no, 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 you can you can do this one. This one is completely independent, so join in. Okay, so um, I've got a central line. Um, I've created a circle. Um, and then what I'm going to do is, same as the first one, is I'm going to increase the diameter so that it's the same diameter. Sorry, I'm going to increase the radius so it is the same as the diameter of my original circle. You'll have to forgive me, I haven't had any coffee today. Okay, so... Um, so this is what I was trying to do. Unfortunately, I can't highlight it. Um, apparently, they don't allow you to highlight videos, but I will try and save it somehow, so don't worry. Um, okay, so you do your semicircle... I think I'm going to have to go to the pen, aren't I? This is really unclear with a with the pencil. That's fine. Let's go to the pen. Um, oh, what? I'll just sugar. Give me a second. Right. Just going to start again. So any of you who are joining in me and doing it along with me, don't worry. Just bear with my faffiness. Okay. So we start again. Do the original circle. That is much clearer, isn't it? Okay. You then increase the radius so it's the diameter of the original circle. Oops. So bear in mind I'm doing this really quickly. But take your time and make sure that the points line up. So here it crosses there exactly. Then change your compass over to the other side. I'm sorry about the wobbling. Every time I move to this side, I end up catching the camera holding up thingy. Okay. You then do your vertical line. So again, I'm going to do this one in pencil. But all I need to do is just establish where it is. Okay. Um, you then go back to your original... Um, diam radius ba -ba -bum. is that right? yep go to your northern point 
create your semicircle. And then you create your springing line. Now for these guys, um, we do need to extend the springing line. So I don't think it's important for this one, but the next one certainly, just extend it. Okay. Um, then what we need to do is we need to divide the springing line into three. And the way that we do that is keep the radius where it is, but we're going to divide the original circle, um, placing the compass there, just here, and then placing the compass here, just there. So what I've actually done is, um, had, I, had I done it the same with there, I would have actually been able to create a regular hexagon. So those of you who know, um, who've done some geometry would understand that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this point up to the top of the vesica. And when I do that, what that actually does is it splits the springing line into, um, sorry, uh, the original baseline into three. So what I'm going to do is just put a line through there, go back to the top put a line through there. Now this is now divided into three, so one, and they're equal parts. What I want to do is I want to transfer that to there. So the way to do that is to reduce your compass. to this width here. So where it's meeting basically the, the hang on, let me bring it up. So I don't know if you can see any closer, but where the circle curves just below is the baseline. And I want my compass to be from here to here. That's the radius that I'm setting. So you don't need to draw it, but I'm just showing you that it should go through both sides and it does. Um, once I've got the compass radiant radius, this actually technically isn't necessary for me to draw, but just to let you know, and I don't actually need to draw the entire semicircle. I just need to identify the points, but I'm just showing you what I'm actually doing. So what I've now done is I've transferred this breakdown of three up onto this line. So it's actually this point and this point that are really, really important. Um, what I'm going to do now is, I'm just trying to figure out if I should do my endpoints first and then come back to this, or if I should just go to, um, yeah, let's just go to it. Okay, so this is known as a two-third span arch. So this is two-thirds of this hole, and this is two-thirds of the hole. So this segment and this segment are two-thirds. Hopefully you guys can understand that. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Oh, no, no, sorry, begging your pardon. I'm going to go back to my original. So now that I've established those points, go back to my original, and I just need to create the vertical lines. It's actually, that needs to come first. So am I shuffling all over the place? I'm not looking at the camera. God, how do people do videos? Honestly, this is really weird for me. Um, 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 sorry, Ali, what did you want me to repeat? I've just got you saying that you've missed it. Please tell me what you've missed. Um, to be honest with you, everything's going to be saved, so you can look through it again, hopefully. Um, I'm just going to go from here to the bottom of the vesica again. Excuse my squeaky chair. All I'm doing is grabbing the length of the vesica so that I can transfer it to this side and create my verticals. Bum, bum, bum. So what we need to do is just go all the way up. Um, don't worry, I'll highlight clearly um, at the end. So 
The next thing we're going to do is we're going to measure, create um, a radius that's the two thirds of this of this line. So what we're going to do is place our compass on one end here and get it to take to the point where the springing line intersects with the vertical. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it up until it meets the vertical and then I'm going to stop. Okay? Then what we're going to do is move to this side. <laughs> and if I've done this correctly, this springing line should meet. And it does! Woo! Uh, but again, in the sort of more traditional Islamic uh, patterns, this is just again an arch two-pointed arch and you could come straight down but in the Islamic um, designs and in some Christian ones what happens is the arch tends to come down and just in a little bit so I'm just going to fill that in I'm just showing it to you separately just to explain and then that's our two-third span arch so let's just highlight it um and this is an example of a two-centered arch. So again, um, it's because on the springing line, I use two points to create the arch itself. And there are lots of examples of two-centered arches. Now you can imagine, um, there are like so many um, examples of two centered arches. I've broken that line into three, I could break it into four, five, six, even eight. Um, and if I break it into eight, I could do a seven eighth arch, or I could do a six eighth arch, or six eighths would obviously be three quarters. So there's lots of variations that you can actually do. Um, I'm just putting the black, oh, that's good. The black in just to highlight this, so. Move to this side. And that's your um, two-third arch. And then just to finish off, we're going to go in and do the three-quarter span arch as well. Um, hopefully um, anyone who wants to join in can kind of join in with that one. Okay, so um, what's really interesting is that um, the, the arches, because they come in, what you sometimes have is on the structure, especially if the arch is um, to construct a building, um, you have something which sort of uh, comes out, I'm trying to do this whilst looking in the camera, um, down here, and this is known as a flying buttress. Um, because of the way this is, if this wasn't in a wall um, being a door, if this was actually the shape of the building, for example, the buttress prevents these from popping out, any of the brickwork here from popping out, so that's what the flying buttresses were. Um, and they'd normally be outside of the building and you'd have a, a weight added, added here to kind of counterweight what's going on. Um, uh, if it was a doorway, sometimes you'd have... Um, you know, like your keystone, which is your main stone, and then the other stones would sort of, stones or brickworks, whatever it was, would come out here this way. Um, what's really interesting about, um, especially the semicircular, uh, the semicircular curves is that um, the brickwork, once the last brick was in, um, would actually um, have amazing strength, and that's because of the circular um, frame itself. So um, really interesting structures and uh, really interesting how following um, something that's based in sacred geometry gives you um, this sort of inherent strength. Um, oh, also, some of you guys asked me about book recommendations. There is a book that was written by um, the sort of head of my school. Um, his name is Khalid Azam. Uh, unfortunately, the book is out of print. I had a look on Amazon and somebody's selling it privately for 90 something pounds. So slightly outside of my budget. But um, yes, there is a book. I don't know if there are any others and I'll certainly, um, I'll keep an eye out and, and see what I can find. Um, okay, so last um, last one is a three quarter arch. So. Police. 
Can you guys hear that actually? So, again, I'm just transferring to brown just so you can see it a little bit more easily. So, um, this one now. Start with the original circle. I'm just going to move this across so it's visible to you guys. Increase the radius so it's the diameter of the original circle. And then what we do is we draw our Vesca Piscus, which is Latin for fish bladder. Right. And then the other side, we bring in our vertical again. And I didn't practice this before I saw you guys, sorry. Um, What we need to do is draw our springing line again. So go back to our original radius. Go to a north point. Add in our springing line and we're going to divide this into four, which is actually quite a straightforward process. Um, but, how are we going to do this? Uh, oh yes, right. We need to take our compass down to the bottom. And what I want to do is, obviously this is already divided in half. Um, what I want to do is I want to divide this in half and this in half, okay? As you can see, my original circle, the way that I divided it in half is by adding this vesica piscis. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same in here. Um, but I'm not going to draw the whole Vesica Piscus because it will become a bit too noisy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for roughly halfway here and roughly halfway there. Oh no, hang on, I've done something wrong. There's something that I've done which is wrong. What have I done? Oh, no, it's fine. Yep, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Um, you, Sorry, I just realised that on my original drawing, I had actually worked it out from the springing line, but you don't need to. I'm positive you don't need to. So, I'm going to do that. And then on this side, I'm just going to cross it there and there. Because my baseline has been divided into four, my spring line will also be divided into four. So yeah, this is actually easier to do it this way. Um, what do I need to do then? I need to get my verticals in. So, original. This is exactly the same as the previous one, but we're going to um, it's a three-quarter one, so it'll be slightly more arched. So I'm just going to get the length of my vesica again. Sorry, there's lots of silences in here. Can't figure it all out. Okay, so do I need to go? Yes, I do. Okay, um, so I'm just going to put the verticals in because that's the only bit that matters, just to kind of give me the right point on my um, springing line as well. Um, so I'm going to do this straight off in black. God help me if I mess it up. So what we're going to do is we're going to place our compass at three quarters. So one quarter, two quarters, three quarters. Take it up to the end of the springing line where it meets the vertical. And then again, bring... Okay, I'm just going to try and see if I can... 
I don't know if that's going to help moving the... Ah, okay, slightly better. So, take it up to the edge and up to there. And then swing around to this side. And then go from the baseline, past the springing line and up. And voila! Um, and then that's pretty much it. And you're just, just finishing off the edges. So, like I told you, it's super easy. Um, nothing complex in it at all. Um, but hopefully that was useful to you guys. I'm rushing, so I've like completely smudged that. So those are your three. So this is known as um, a semicircular um, one-centered arch. This is known as a two-third span arch. And this one is known as a three-quarter span arch. And these two are both examples of two-centered arches. Um, there are loads of actual other examples where you've got multiple centers um, where um, that you've got um, flat tops which are centered in, in one location and the arches are centered elsewhere. There's, um, yeah, you, you can kind of go with it. Um, but yeah, um, the first one, yeah, the, is it known as a horseshoe arch as well? I think I th it's called a round topped horseshoe arch. Yeah, that's the other name for it. Um, so yeah, any questions, I suppose, before I end the video? I don't know, I'm just trying to go back to see if I've missed anything. Um, did I make that look easy, Flora <laughs> It is easy, honestly. It's, I promise you, the only thing that you need to work on is just um, confidence with the compass. The moment you have that, I promise you, you'll, you'll come back to this and you'll think how, um, how easy it is. Uh, so, hang on, let's... Uh, so, Ali, please tell us the radius of the last art. The ra radius, honestly, you can set it however you want really I um my original because I've done it on an a was just slightly bigger than a3 I originally set the radius at what did I set it I just literally on open my compass I didn't even measure it I think um 33 mils um so is I I think that's what you mean? Um, the book, as I said, to refer to is the one by Halle Dazam, but it's it's out of print, unfortunately. Um, Mardi Arts, what's your advice on keeping accurate? Whenever I try, I find my geometry to be so inaccurate. Okay, so first of all, um, uh, Angie, I'll come to your question in a second. Um, Mardi, in terms of being accurate, um, if you're using pencils or leads, well, I would really recommend leads. Um, but if you're using pencils, I tend to go for 6H, 4H at a minimum, but I tend to go for 6H or 8H, um, and I sharpen them to within an inch of their life. Um, in my opinion, this is blunt. So that's one point. I then keep my line really soft. I mean, I've used a pen, but I don't, I don't push down. Um, when you're putting the compass, when you're putting your pencil in your compass... It's really important to have a good compass. So I do recommend, as I mentioned at the beginning, if you're starting off and you can't afford the more expensive stuff, then Jackar are really good. So J-A-K-A-R. Um, but when you're putting your pencil in, I mean, these have got plastic points in, so just bear in mind, these aren't really for longevity. Um, but, it, you know, you've got a really fine point at this end and um, it, it does hold it. I don't use these mechanisms. I always use the, the tuner from there. When you put your compass down, make sure it's vertical. So this is basically just finishing off what I was saying yesterday. Make sure you keep your compass vertical as much as possible because if you, if you do this, what you're doing is you're making the hole bigger where you're putting your pin in and then just caress the paper. You don't actually really need a line terribly much darker than that. I mean, I need it in order to show you. I mean, you can't see the line I've just drawn. But when I'm working on it, I don't need anything to be that much darker. The more you press, the wider that pencil line becomes. When the pencil line becomes wider, then when you go to put your compass point where two pencil lines have met, then where's the actual center? You know, like if I, if I just show you here, if one pencil line is this thick, I'm zooming in, and one line is that thick, right? 
this is the center you're looking for, but you could end up putting your compass here, 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 or here. And it, we're talking about a tiny dot, but you're also talking about geometry. Geometry is about the necessity of, of knowing where this point actually is. Um, uh, so um, that would be one thing. Um, and it's honestly just practice. Um, have confidence with what you're... Um, what you're doing, how you're handling it, um, and, and just keep practicing. Um, eventually you'll get it. Uh, first time I did geometry, all I just saw were lines. Um, and it was a little bit overwhelming, but, um, eventually I started to see, I mean, there would be like a thousand lines on the page and I could see where there was one missing. So you get to that by learn. It's like learning a language and that's the only way you look at it. It's learning a language and your eye will move across the page naturally as you as you become more familiar with with what you're doing um uh, how else can you improve accuracy uh the compass really is the key point um and then it comes down to draftsmanship i can't think uh, do you ha yeah i think i can't think what else off the top of my head any other questions okay um if there are just drop me an email um, for now, what I'm going to do is, um, leave it at this point and hopefully, um, I can, I can answer questions in, um, a future sort of message or something. All right, guys. Thanks so much. Hope it was useful. Bye.